Hello and welcome to ACS Golf and this week's review. Now, lovely day over here in the UK. The sun has just set outside my window um, and it's that time of year where it's starting to get nice and it's starting to get warm and everyone's starting to get out on a golf course in the Northern Hemisphere. I feel sorry for you guys in the Southern Hemisphere where your golf season is coming to an end. So these reviews of clubs are even more important now because obviously you're starting to look to upgrade or change your bag. Now, this club this week I picked up, or oh, I say clubs actually, I picked up for £80. It's five to nine nine. It's from a brand that no longer makes clubs anymore. Obviously, if you've seen the thumbnail and you've obviously clicked on this video, you already know what it is, and it is this the Nike Vapor Pro. I mean, look at that. What an absolute butter knife of a modern muscle back, which is pretty much, it is a blade. Now, if you don't know, obviously Nike used to make golf clubs. They stopped in 2016, basically saying, we're not making any money from this. Um, and you find that actually, annoyingly, <laughs> and a lot of people back then who did reviews were saying that, hold on, they were just actually starting to really do well with their clubs. Their clubs were really starting to perform especially sort of the Nike Vapor drivers, which I want to get my hands on. I actually have got my hands on. Hopefully one will turn up in a couple of days where you've got that big cavity back as a driver. So it's not a shell. It's just a massive cavity back at the back, which I find so intriguing. And I cannot wait to try that out, obviously, if it turns up. Now, going into these Nike clubs. Now, before I delve into this information, just to say as well, some of these clubs are still actually in Tour Pro's bag. So Tony Finau is still currently playing, I think it's the four iron, if I just check. Three iron, sorry, the three iron. The Nike Vapor Fly Pro, so the model up from this, is still in this bag, the three iron. Which just shows they were onto it. They were so close, and then they stopped making them. So never mind. Now, let's move on and talk about the Nike Vapor which I have right now. As I said, picked it up for £80, so that's about $95 for anyone over in the USA. Um, as all videos, we will talk about the technology in the club, get it down to the driving range, then I'll talk feel, forgiveness, um, distance, etc. And like sort of who these clubs are aimed for, who can put them in the bag. And then also then we'll talk price point and then obviously maybe some other options as well out there you could go for now because i will say 80 pounds for five to nine was actually a massive steal um so with anything that i could say price wise if you keep your eye out sometimes you really do get lucky now first before i go into technology let's have a closer look at the clubs um it will be the five the six uh, five the seven and the nine which i actually took down the driving range so let's have a look so here I look at the clubs of five seven and nine now look at them they're just absolutely beautiful I love that sort of modern look about them and obviously obviously like the black on the back and obviously the Nike swooshes as well I will say these have been paint filled in so the original Nike swooshes are actually sort of lighter yellow a bit like sort of the seven I'd say and they're just gorgeous looking clubs so there you go absolute gorgeous things there I mean look at that just in the last bit of daylight outside i mean just beautiful but very much a blade muscle back so technology wise there's not really much too much you can do with technology wise i mean obviously it's a forged iron but there's not really much in them it's not like you know your modern day sort of p790s from tailor made where they have the speed foam etc in them it's just <laughs> a lump of metal but one thing that they have done now Majority of clubs, especially with even blades, have a tungsten weight near the toe here to add a bit more performance. Now, what Nike did is rather than put it at the toe, they put a tungsten bullet right in the middle here. So right at the bottom in the middle of the blade. Now, the whole point of this was basically so just to increase the performance of when you hit it in the sweet spot, which for blades you need to do. And the results were pretty good, to be fair. And that's why they did it. And, you know, people were happy with these. Now, with the Nike Vapor, there was actually three models of these. Obviously, I've got the Pro here, which was very much the muscle back blade. Now, they had the combo, 
which then introduced a bit of a cavity back. Look, look very similar to this. The cavity back was sort of, you know, you say your mid handicappers, etc. And then they had the Vapor Speed. Now, the Vapor Speed was actually a hollow design, a bit like the P790. So, and a lot of, you know, Sort of now sort of designs like I think the MP20 sort of HMB hot metal blade, you know, that hollow design, more forgiveness, more hotness of the face, etc., more distance. Now, so there's a technology in there from 2015, the club is, as I've mentioned before. Now, let's get down to range and I'll talk through a few numbers and then we'll discuss about the club in further detail in who it's aimed at etc um but yeah not really huge amount of technology in there because in the end of the day like i've mentioned already it is just a blade <laughs> there's not much space as you can see for anything to go in there here we are down at sand down couple of shots from nine iron the seven iron and five iron now let's jump straight into those numbers flat carry on average from nine iron was 120 yards total distance 126 yards full speed 95 height was in 67 feet and launch angle 24 degrees for the seven iron had a flat carry of 151 yards total distance 160 ball speed 109 launch angle 20 height 75 and five iron on average flat carry only 157 total distance 174 ball speed 112 launch angle 60 and height 62 now one thing I will say, 7-9 is roughly around there, maybe a little bit more I'd want in average total distance. 5-iron was short, I'd normally have about 180, and 9-iron was short again, I'd normally have about 135. But what I would say is going into consistency of these things, 9-iron, the only difference was between the longest and the shortest was 13 yards, I'm pretty happy with that consistency. 7-iron got a bit worse, it was 23 yards. And then 5-iron was 51 yards difference with my longest and the shortest. The longest being 200 yards and the shortest being 149. That just shows the fact that these blades are unforgiving, which I expected because that's what blades are. They're unforgiving. But if you hit them out of the middle, they are perfect and you can be really consistent with them, which showed in that sort of 9-iron, to be fair. I think if I did a few more shots, I probably could have brought that sort of average between them probably down even more to be honest now let's get back to the studio so there you go now figures wise as i mentioned you know average 174 yards for the five iron for example you know normally i'd want about 180 managed to get it 200 yards on one shot which just says 200 yards holding the average 174 i was all over the place with this going straight into the fact of you know who are these clubs aimed at now they're very much aimed at someone lower handicapper or your scratch golfer. Basically, anyone who can really hit an iron extremely well and hit that middle of the face the majority of the time. Now, for me, for me, I don't necessarily need to necessarily say that you need to be a low handicapper. You can have mid handicappers, even high handicappers who have fantastic iron play and they can hit it in the middle, but they can't obviously, but they fall down maybe on a putting or they're driving, etc. So, if you want a blade, and you know you can hit your irons really well, then then regardless of handicap, then I think these are great. But for me, you know, I played these before the MP20 MMCs. They are blade like, but they're multi construct. You've got titanium here, and you've got a tungsten weight at the back, and they're a little bit thicker, and they give me a little bit more forgiveness. Um, so going into this forgiveness it's a blade there is no forgiveness if you miss the center it hurts and you know about it feeling wise though when you get i personally for me in golf you know hit up in the comments if you think i'm wrong but hitting a blade like club like this out the middle oh mwah, there's no better feeling from that i mean it's, it's such a good feeling. It feels great. And then it makes you think, oh, I can put these in the bag. Mm, no. <laughs> like that 200-yard one with this. I mean, I was only going to do like five shots per club, as mentioned. And then I hit it out of the middle on that one. And then I ended up doing another sort of 10, 15 because I was chasing that feeling again because it was fantastic. Um, so feeling-wise, yes, it feels gorgeous. It feels lovely when you get out of the middle. If you miss the middle of the club, your hands hurt and it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> so that's something to think about. Look-wise, 
I've already mentioned, they look absolutely stunning. They really do. And they are great. Now, one thing as well with a muscle back and blades is the whole purpose for them really is not the distance. I mean, these are all very traditional lofted clubs, which I personally quite like because it means, you know, you get higher ball flight with the five iron, etc. I mean, a lot of these um, game improvement irons, they come out really low because even though the idea is they try and help you get the ball in the air, obviously some of their lofts, I mean, the seven iron, for example, 27 on some game improvement irons, they just come out like an absolute bullet. While these are very much traditional lofts, um, I believe like the 7 iron to 32 degree loft. So I actually stopped the video there to have a quick look. The lofts are actually not 32. I got that completely and utterly wrong. The loft of this is actually for a 7 iron, for example, is 35 for a 7 iron. Now 34, I think, is actually normally more traditional. And the pitching wedge for this, for example, is 47. Back, you know, these MP ranges are 46. So very weak lofted, but the idea of that is the stopping power. So the idea is to be able to hit the ball in the air and get it to stop and be very consistent with it, rather than those game improvements, as I said, which they can really balloon and come in low and then hit the green and, and roll off. Now, one thing with a muscle back as well is the ability to shape it. And that's one of the main things about blades. As someone who is looking for consistency, and looking to be able to shape the ball because they want to fade and they want to draw. And with this, you can. I mean, my natural shot at the moment is in most videos, if you see me, is a natural draw. That's the way I set up is to have that to stop me from slicing the ball. And it works very well for me. Now, one thing I did, so I got my draws very nice. And on time I went, hold on, let's try and actually fade it. And first shot try with the five iron, I went for a fade and I got it. And I was very happy with it. So they are very, if you know what you're doing, they're very easily to be able to shape, which is great, which is exactly what you want from a blade. Now, going into it and further going into, so we've discussed who these clubs are aimed at. We've discussed the feel, which is fantastic, if out the middle. We've also discussed, obviously, the forgiveness. There isn't any. It's a blade. <laughs> you, you, you know, they're not built for goodness. You know, workability, fantastic. Again, now, cost. So, like I said, I picked this up for £80 and about $95. And I got very lucky. Now, on average, sort of around on eBay, so second-hand websites, you can pick up four to pitch and wedge for around £225, which comes out on, which about dollars-wise is about, uh, $270. I made a note. So there you go. Now, other options around 2015 and obviously just ideas. I mean, obviously, Tylers make really good blades if you want to go down the blade route. Mizuno, supposed to be the best feeling golf clubs in the world. I tried a lot of Mizunos. They do feel absolutely gorgeous. But I would say this out the middle feels better than that. But then this isn't a traditional blade. Now, but if you're going in sort of 2015, for example, you know, the Mizuno MP4 came out at the same time as these are actually £279, what I saw on eBay, which is about $335. And then you sort of find in that sort of that ball mark again around that £275, £334, $33, the Ping Eye Blade was year up. So these are actually very well valued at the moment for the range that they are in. So I would think the price point is perfect, which makes you think, I mean, night clubs, I mean, soon, I think to get your hands on a decent pair of these, which are worn, etc., it's going to be very difficult. The price is only going to go up because collective people out there collect, will be starting to collect these because night clubs have quite a good following and obviously they've stopped making them. But at the moment, I think the price for these are very reasonable. So overall, if you want to get yourself a blade, if you're good enough for a blade, do have a look out for these Nike Vapor Pros. I love them. I think they're great. Now, as I mentioned, for me, I'm not good enough to have them in the bag, but I will certainly be taking these out five to nine on a nice summer's day. I'm playing with a few friends and we're not scoring. We're just having some fun. I will definitely have these in the bag because hitting them out the middle, there is no feeling like it. It is lovely. And also... I will say this as well, if you're looking to progress, if you're looking to become a better iron player, sometimes it's good to get something like this because the feedback, you know where you've hit it, you know where it's gone wrong, and the feedback from these things are great. I mean, 
this is one thing what I love about my MP20s. And one thing that I've actually sort of struggling with at the moment, because going to game improvement, I actually increased uh, to decrease my handicap, which it has done. But I'm finding actually my iron play, which used to be one of the best things I did, is suffering a bit because I know that I've got game improvement irons. I know I've got that forgiveness there. I'm not concentrating as much on my shots with my irons as I used to do with the MP20s, MMCs, when I knew if I was really bad with them, I would be punished. So as a training aid, I wouldn't maybe necessarily say the nights because like they're over 200 pounds, but as a training aid, if you want to help increase your ball striking, then maybe look out for an old set of blades. Something that you can take out on the golf course and practice with. You can take down the driving range and practice, really think and really work on that ball strike to really get that ball in the middle of the club and then start shaping it and doing other works with it and try different shots. So there we go. The Nike Vapor Pro Blades. Overall, fantastic clubs. Good value for money, I'd say, on the second hand market. And obviously, they will, looking at them in the bag, they look great in the bag. And they obviously will turn heads as well. But be warned, you need to be a very good iron player to play with these. If not, look at a combo version or look for the speed versions. Okay, great. Now, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. And thanks to everyone who have done so far. You know, give this video a like and also in the comments. Let me know if you play with any Nike clubs, really. I mean, the fact of the matter is, and even though, you know, they don't make him anymore, some of the later things are very good. So, yeah, thank you. And we'll see you next week for next week's review. Bye-bye.